Holy hey, crap. everybody. Welcome to Cred. How is everyone doing? No one jumped out of their seats yet? It would have nah. helped if uh, you had the mic close to your mouth when you screamed. Oh, I wasn't sure. Yeah, I. to be honest, so did I, but that's because I am an alcoholic and I've... No one heard that well. but you. Frank oh, said really? that he peed a little bit, so that's what Kyle's answering. Well, yeah, don't we all pee a little bit? Usually in the bathroom. No, just just me. All right, <laughs> well, that's that's fine then, I guess. Uh, guys, this is Cred with Murder Hobo Inc. So let me just remind you all, you can follow us here on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to join one of our games, we do have a game that is now open on Saturday. Send a message to Twitter or at mhoboinc at gmail.com if you want to be interested. We'll also consider you for next Saturday's open one shot as well, because there is only one seat open for Saturday. After that, I have to tell you about some really cool, awesome swag. Uh, unfortunately, I keep all of my Murder Hobo Inc. swag behind a glass case uh, where lights shine on it, and they shine just as much as the sweat from my balding head. <laughs> Lovely. I should put makeup on because I look beautiful um what was i gonna say so you can buy some cool swag from there if you want to listen <laughs> to our uh audio only podcast and miss out on all the fun uh uh visual cues that <laughs> everyone gets of love and jokes and laughs at carol what are you doing don't laugh at something that no um, one can hear on the audio only podcast you mean what you giving the double bird hmm double bird that's the double bird. You're flipping the double bird. <laughs> no, why do they call it a bird? Because I, I don't. I don't know. There's no got a very. No reason. one's ever actually asked. That's that's the real thing that disappoints me the most. Uh, guys, also, thanks to our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, uh, for giving me wonderful dice in which to destroy my players and allow them to roll absolutely and awful terribly. And finally, if your game stinks, uh, ooh. I was going to say Pirate Dog Dice again, but they're not the answer to that. It's Odd Fish Games. Uh, are you about to descend into some lava tube tunnels uh, full of grisly bodies, corpses, or other unmentionable things? Odd Fish Games. They also have an opening for Gen Con. They need some help running their booths. They will pay in money or smells. And Please do it so that Kyle won't show up, you know, half naked and try to be a booth. Half food. naked. Uh, you know what, though? I am going to download a video of me snorting the uh, putrid sewers <laughs> and then proceeding to gag for uh, 10 to 15 minutes. I think that will sell everything properly. Oh, God. Oh, I think that is just about everything. Uh, if you missed out Murder Hobo Con, that was last Sunday. Um, we cured cancer. We finally did it. Shotgun and all. That's all it really took. Uh, it's going great, guys. Did you yeah! watch Rick and Morty? Uh, uh, which one? That was the end joke. Was that the end? No, wait. I'm not joking. It was a cure to cancer? Or was it yeah, no, one? it was a cure for AIDS, not for AIDS. Oh, I thought it was cancer, my bad. No, my bad. it was AIDS. I'm wrong. One squeeze lemon like... juice for Bailey. Yeah, <laughs> 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 did see it. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I keep up on my Rick and Morty. Rick, Rick and Morty is awesome. <laughs> but this is uh, not a Rick and Morty appreciation this hour. This is not Rick and Morty appreciation hour. However, if you would like it to be. <laughs> Uh, comment on Twitch and comment repeatedly so that I uh, pay attention uh, to you feeble worms who are beneath me who are enjoying uh, the entertainment upon which I and I alone bring to you um, no help from uh, people like Carol who I may be pointing in the wrong direction uh, probably am Carol down here um, who offers some help. Uh, Carol, why don't you tell people about yourself and who you play? Who I play? Not that they care, but... <laughs> well, hi, everyone. My name is Carol, as you just said. Uh, I am a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commissioned mini painter. And I'm on Between the Rolls often. And But here, I'm playing Anja Jaeger, my half-elven ranger. Monster Slayer. 
and that's it. That's it. Okay. That's it. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, one of my least favorite people on the show right now, and that's only <laughs> because he writes notes of everything I say and then proceeds to correct me, even when I acknowledge <laughs> that I myself was wrong. Ernie, why don't you introduce yourself and your stupid character? Well, yeah, so I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm playing Riley, the warlock who has a magical tablet that was given to me so I can take notes. And uh, my goal in this campaign is to collect all the information that Kyle provides so I can throw it back at him. Uh, at the request of my uh, my patron, of course. Of course. It was of a course. delight when you told me about your character, and I thought, great, someone will take notes. How wrong I was. <laughs> yeah, note takers, there's some pros, there's some cons. Some people want them in your game. Sometimes, if you're a DM like Kyle, you don't. <laughs> uh, and finally, he was missing last week, uh, and speaking of corrections... We'll get to it after we introduce him. Uh, DJ, why don't you introduce yourself and the many faces of Bran? Uh, yes, hello. I am DJ. I play Bran, the Way of the Mercy monk, uh, follower and devo devotee of the Raven Queen. Sadly, I was not here last week. I tried to make it. I really did. But, I know uh, he did. Moving stuff from my father up from Florida to New Hampshire is difficult at best. And what was Florida? What do you call Florida now? Oh, um, well, not to offend anybody, but yes, Florida is basically uh, the waiting room to hell. Uh, pretty sure you just go there to get accustomed to hell's temperature and then wait <laughs> to go. Well, that's why Florida is America's dong. If you ever get close. <laughs> Well, the at area. least now I know I wow, have the body of that, but that's yep, and, and, and yep. it's sweaty, it's gross, oh it's Mar-a-Lago is just a little rash on there that you can't get rid of. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. You won't worry just about Just a little orange people. spot. Just yeah, just a little oh, orange God. thing oh, you God. can never get rid of. <laughs> no matter how much you want to get rid of them. <laughs> it's a herb it's a it's a herpy. <laughs> oh, it's definitely an open sore. <laughs> Speaking of ah! open sores, uh, Caitlin, our uh, divine soul <laughs> sorceress, <laughs> is not going to be with us tonight <laughs> or uh, possibly next time either. Um, she should be here and I would be nice. <laughs> Although I did plug her last uh, uh, between the roles. So uh, I think this is completely. <laughs> I think you did. Caitlin, uh, we love you. Have fun doing uh, <laughs> your thing. Uh, if you go swimming, I hope the deep ones take you and drown you. Uh, anyway. Oh, wow. Uh, Jesus, Kyle. I'm feeling terrible tonight, Apparently. which means I'm going to have fun. And We're going to die. Kill your character. We're going to yes. die tonight. Well, I do have an idea of using Jeremiah's bait to lure out these uh, creatures that are in the lava tubes. <laughs> <coughs> That'll work, guys. That yeah. will work. No, 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 no. I am not playing an evil character. Are you sure about that? Actually, I, I didn't choose an alignment because I don't believe in alignment. <laughs> I think he just broke. Oh, uh, we're breaking me here. All right. Uh, one thing I have to clarify with with Bran, uh, and I mentioned this last time. I said the leaders of the city were missing. They are missing from the city because they are absent doing their other island duties. They don't need someone to rescue them. They're absent, not yeah. missing. Sure. Although technically that is missing from the city. I stand by my defense. You people overreacted to everything. I think that's just about it. Do you guys want to go ahead and get started or do you want to yeah, wait for I wanna... Caitlin? I can I... wait for Caitlin. I can vamp. Oh, no. No, no, no. I want to go find out why. Uh, what's his name? Zeb? Zed? Zeb. 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 With a B. Yeah, why did he just drunk scream? Who you've met multiple times. He's an Although asshole. this is the rudest he's been so far. Uh, Turns I'm gonna... out when you put someone in prison, they don't like it <coughs> and they get nasty. Uh, I want to go back in there and find out why he just friggin' screamed. Yeah, maybe he's being Bloody pulled murder. under the earth all of a sudden. 
Yeah. And we can grab hold and we can make a human chain and all find out what's going on. And rip oh. his arms off. It's Tremors, everybody. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm Kevin Bacon. Actually, no, I'm probably not. <laughs> I'm, Be I'm, Fred. Be Fred. Fred's yeah. the better one. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm the dude on the pogo <laughs> stick. I'm the kid on the pogo stick, all right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is why these episodes go on for a long time, because they try and break me, and they, they succeed every time. Uh, okay, so we were talking with Captain Lothar. Uh, he seemed pretty stilted upon giving you information, but informed you that he wants to help you and the other missing sailors that have been going on from this island. It's the island. It is not right, and he wants someone to help investigate it. However, he can't openly discuss it here at the stockade. Uh, so he tells you about a a place where he can talk, but before he can give you uh, uh, the place, you hear screaming from the other side of the door, from the other side of the building. And as you get up and go to open the door, the scream changes and what you see fades to black. And all of a sudden, uh, and you hear a pop as bone cracks, and we find what? ourselves fuck? with Bran earlier today. And Bran <laughs> is pulling a dislocated shoulder from uh, one of the patients that has come to visit him at the Crafty Cauldron. Uh, we see Marju uh, uh, is kind of helping to brace the gentleman. Uh, while the island guard Tua of the Toa Island Guard uh, is in another room currently treating the Jeremiah with some lovely gruel uh, and trying to massage it down his throat while Jeremiah sits in a coma. And it seems like, Bran, you have kind of been doing this for quite a while because once the people have heard that there is a doctor, a new doctor in town, and unlike the priests and priestesses of Fet and of the Light, um, you're free. The first taste is free, I believe, is the uh, statement. And uh, people have been flocking to your door looking to get treatments for things that have happened uh, to them that they've just been kind of holding on to. Um, and despite the fact that you're not taking payment, there have been gifts of fish and gold left at your doorstep. And the guy's arm you pulled off, he hops off the table. Uh, thank you so much, Doc. I really appreciate it. And he goes and walks out. How much do I owe you? Bran is muted. I say. Do not worry, just be more careful. You cannot do your job if you're incapacitated like that. Well, thank you, Doc. I really appreciate that. And he goes and runs out. The, well, not runs out. He goes out, walks out the door, just like. <clears throat> and as he walks out, and you do have uh, an almost full waiting room. Uh, there is a little girl who is uh, uh, has a little bit of blood coming out of her mouth as she has apparently pulled out one of her teeth. Oh, uh, and her parents are with her, just like... Mm. <laughs> and uh, other few, you know, someone's complaining about headaches. Um, but as the door closes shut, we just hear that ding ling ling Is the doctor here? There's been an accident at the wall at the work site. How the severe is it? Yes. How severe is it? Part of the wall came down. They told me to grab the doctor here and to get the priests of priests of light and the priests of fet. Terrible um, things. A lot of men are injured right now. Oh dear, I forget my assistant's name. It's been so long now. Marju. Marju. I look to Marju. Marju. See yes. what you can do for the others. Um, I may be a while. Uh, they may have to come back another day. But oh. if, they, if it's something simple, patch it up as best you can. 
uh, I'm sure with Tua's help, we should be fine. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I will grab my uh, medical kit and tell the man to lead the way. Okay. And he well, leads you out the door and you head back towards the city. Um, right back. Roll me a perception check, please. Twelve. Twelve. You get this uneasy feeling uh, from the tree line from the waterfront. But you don't spot anything and the guy just Please hurry. Come on. There's so many people hurt. And he rushes you through the main gate. And as the camera watches the two of you leave through the front gate, uh, uh, we see a scaly but shadowed figure peeking out through some reeds at the crafty cauldron. Uh, the gentleman continues to take you. My name is uh, uh, Carmelo. Um, you're the new doctor in town, yeah? Yes, my name is Bran. Bran. Oh. We're relieved to have you here. and uh, I'm not sure what you're going to be able to do that the priest won't be able to do, but uh, they said to get you and that you were the guy to call. I would like to just incite him to be on the safe side. Sure. Was, was Ernie sending out <laughs> public messages? <laughs> Uh, no, but 25. 25. Uh, he is uh, very much off his rocker. He saw something um, that has clearly disturbed him. Um, and he is kind of just being a little bit of a chatterbox. And the way he's taking you, it is to that section of wall that was being constructed when you came into town not too long ago. Do I see any dust rising from there? Yeah, with your perception, there is uh, a bit of dust rising from that area. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. All right. And he leads you uh, past the statue of the light goddess, uh, which, you know, this huge statue that seems to shrink whenever you get close to it. And as you walk away, it gets bigger and bigger. And you arrive on a scene of disaster where you saw a bit of smoke rising up into the air, dust rising up into the air, it is caking uh, what looks like a lot of people. It looks like uh, some of the uh, uh, volcanic, red volcanic stone that had been part of the construction uh, where some of the marble was uh, going to be applied. It looks like some of that had uh, uh, some weaker material in it and it has collapsed and large pieces of rubble are just strewn everywhere. Uh, the stilts, I'm having a brain fart here, that the scaffolding, workers, scaffolding thank you, the scaffolding that the workers on, cracked, broken, uh, and as you look, there are indeed several uh, priests and priestesses, both of Fet and of the Light. Uh, you actually do see Kenzu, who you had met on the side of the mountain earlier, as he proceeds to uh, um, uh, say an invocation and snap a broken arm underneath the skin, pulling it out. And then as he says these words, this glow emanates hot uh, and red and angry looking. Uh, but the man's arm is healed. Uh, there's a priest of light who is organizing and telling people what to do. And... Yeah, where would you like to start? There are injured people everywhere. There are some people who are just coughing up storm. They're needing water. Does it seem that we have a uh, somebody who's leading, someone who's being a uh, who's organizing the relief effort at this point? That would be the priest of light. Yes. Uh, uh, then I will go to the priest of light and present myself. Uh, you are the new doctor. The, yes, I am I'm about the accident. I am Brother Mateo of Light. Um, I'm told you are very dexterous. There are some gentlemen on the other side of the wall 
Uh, we haven't been able to get to them quite yet. We're taking care of those who are over here. If you can get over there and check on some of them and what's going on there, we would greatly appreciate it. All right. And look over at the section that he's pointing at. Uh, what does it look like? Uh, it is a partially built wall, and then the crumbling stone on top of it have almost made this thing incredibly difficult to pass. Looks like, though, you might be able to work your way up and around uh, with some of the broken scaffolding and some of the larger chunks of rock. All right. Um, I give a nod, place my pack down, and uh, begin to make my way over. Give me a acrobatics check, please. Uh, acrobatics here. Oh, there it is. It is hitting. Oh, nice. 24. Yes, you are up and over. Again, like I said, you start climbing up this broken scaffolding as some of it begins to break. You step over, you start balancing along another piece of bamboo, and you are up over the wall and on the other side. Uh, and you do see that there uh, look to be three or four individuals over there. Um, some look like they're being sprained. Um, uh, and overall, it looks like they might be okay. Only a couple of the Brocks came over on this side. It looks like they maybe just fell over the wall and hurt themselves. I will uh, call out for the injured. Who here is injured? Severely. Broken bones, ruptures. Who can move? Uh, I can, sir. I, I can move. Um... I think everyone's accounted for, but I think Venu's the one who's the worst injured. And I, he points sorry. over. Uh, sorry, you're good. Uh, points over, and underneath actually a large bit of marble is a man who is uh, underneath the stone. And it looks like it's about a ton or so. And he uh, is just barely sticking out. Oh great! You're giving me the seat. You're giving me Obito from Naruto. Great. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, I think he was entirely halfway. This guy's head is out. He can have an open casket, provided it's just this half. So he doesn't lose one of his eyes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We're good. We're good. <laughs> um, I will go over there and take a quick peek to see what condition he is in before I touch anything. Yeah, go ahead. Well, you have a good perception, and I kind of want to get on with this. Um, yeah, you see Vino, he is literally crushed under the stone. Um, he's active. He's making eye contact with you, although it tends to drift off here and there. But uh, uh, even as he, you know, tries to greet you, you can see this cough of, of blood uh, chances are the stone, uh, stone has crushed his ribs, punctured at least one of his lungs. Um, but the only thing keeping him from really solidly dying right now is the fact that the stone is there. I will call for as many of the men that are capable to come over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, three of them limp over to you. Uh, I will tell them to find whatever levers they, whatever levers or devices they can to help move this rock off, and I will prepare a healing hand for the moment they get it off. Okay. Uh, I wish to basically stop the bleeding as much as I can using pressure points mm -hmm. and stem the flow. Uh, to parts of his body, but leave it going to the brain. Okay. <coughs> All right. The three men attempt to help get the stone off. Uh, and the scaffolding that they attempt to use as levers uh, literally snap 
in their hands, and one of them just lands face first into the stone uh, and onto the floor. The other two are just unable to lift this up. Ugh. This is awful. I'm, I'm going to be okay, any... right? I have no ability to... Well, I'm just thinking out of uh, out of game. I have no ability to break this. Um... <laughs> Did you see chat? Did you just type... see chat? No. It's like get his done. insurance information first. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. Brutal. Uh, so that, is about right, that is about the right thing nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag he is crying. Um will you, will you tell my love my wife I love her? <laughs> I will hold his hand. And oh I will lean down. Whatever they do, don't don't let them put me in the cemetery. Let's I will look at him, uh-huh. and I will lean down, and I will ask him. I will pray for your soul. Is there a secret wi- you wish to impart to the Raven Queen, or more favor to her? Is there wish? Is there anything you wish to impart on your family? And that's when the DM doesn't have an answer for that question. So the guy just breathes out his last breath. Oh, you, you killed an NPC because you no, didn't I'm have kidding. an answer. I see how that works. <laughs> I'm totally cool with that ending. <laughs> no, I absolutely am just going to delay this so I have time to think up an answer. <laughs> no. Uh, what actually happens? Just tell Sheriff not, not to bury me in this throw me into the water the, like we always talked about. Tell her I love her. <laughs> oh, God, it hurts. Very well. I will then end his pain by using a harming hand. And what did the observers react to this? I, I want to. Would you pause for just a second, Ernie, so I can set the scene just a hair bit? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm just my really heel, excited. My harming hand for this will be, it'll be gentle, basically yeah, placing my hand this, over his head. Yeah, as opposed to this um, black, evil looking thing that, you know, when you strike an opponent's key point, it just kind of spreads this blackness through. Uh, instead, it's a warm, dark feeling that passes from you, and it's comforting, like being wrapped up in a warm blanket on a, a, a freezing night. Um, and you see as this energy, uh, the key from you leaves your hand and goes into him, there's just this pause, this... Uh, this wave of relief that um, you can see in his eyes uh, as the life slowly fades out from him. And as you pick yourself up and turn around, the other three gentlemen are have their heads bowed. They make a symbol. And give me a flat charisma check. Mercy of the dice. That's a two. Off an 18. And that symbol is warding them, you think, from evil. You've kind of seen people do this. And they're taking a step back away from you. And um, this has been some time has passed as this goes through. And you can see that enough rock has been cleared through um, several of the island guard, as well as the Arukatan uh, home guard are now hopping over the wall uh, and proceeding to help and aid. Um, 
and the workers just rush to get out of your way and back into the city, back into the safety behind what uh, what amount of wall there is. Uh, and as the Arukatun guard proceeds to leverage, oh yeah, they've got it, uh, proceed to leverage the stone up and off as another one uh, pulls uh, the body uh, from underneath they do not do it gently, and uh, the part that is crushed, some of it remains behind as they pull him out from underneath this lifted stone, and there's comfort in knowing that he was not going to make it even had you lifted the stone, had you been successful. You probably would have uh, 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 delayed the inevitable and made it incredibly painful for him for the rest of what was going to be his life. Uh, and as you ponder upon that, one of the island guard comes up. We have things well in hand. Uh, Captain Lothar has returned from his duties uh, on the other side of the island and wishes to speak with you. Uh, considering the mutineers, your crewmate? Yes, I see. I'll take a look at the destruction. Very well. If you are sure, you all have it in hand. This man, his wife, where is she located? But they are not too far from the wall here. Point me in the direction then. Sir, I have orders. You're to go to the stockade and speak with Captain Lothar. It seems rather urgent, but if you like, I can... Uh... We can stop there on the way. Give me your charisma check. Either persuasion or intimidation. I feel like that's... Either is just as good. That's true. <laughs> I rolled a nat one. Oh, Jesus, a two and a so one. A total of one. Wow. Two and a one are your first two rolls. This bodes well. This bodes really well. Oh We're getting God. it out of the way. It's fine. Yeah. Shit. I understand you mean well, but we will inform him. Everybody here who's doing work on the wall knew that there was dangers to it. They got paid compensatingly for it. And honestly, if the woman doesn't already know that something happened to her husband, I'd be surprised. Now, Captain Lothar insists that you see him immediately. And you can go in chains, or you can go willingly. I will step up to him face to face. Her, but yes, go ahead. Oh, her. Very well. I will step up to her face to face, staring her at her with my mask. <laughs> Could you not poke me in the face with that? <laughs> Very well. But this does not show kindly to your community. I'm surprised you would put the death of somebody over some authority issue that can wait. There are rules and laws according to the death. And Very considering well. that the crew, your crew, your mutineers are doomed to be hanging, I would think their lives are a little bit more important than someone who's already passed. And she goes off, hops up onto the wall where it has been cleared off, turning to offer you a hand. Uh, whether you take it or not is entirely up to you. I will make my own way up, retrieve my pack, and then follow her. Okay. Uh, you see the older gentleman in the light robes. Thank you, Bran, correct? Were you able yes. to save everyone? No. One was destined for the other side. Tell his wife that his last request was to be buried at sea not in the cemetery. I'm 
be sure to tell them that. Uh, thank you so much for your help, Bran. We appreciate it, the Priest of Light and I do. And you can see that he has other priests around him, and they are all healing as much as they possibly can, giving water where they can. And uh, the he Brother Mateo just gives you a warm smile, uh, and before turning off and uh, giving orders and making sure everything is maintained. I moved the mic away from my mouth. Uh, did you catch the last part? Yeah, I did. Okay. Because apparently you didn't hear me scream at the top of my voice earlier, but all right. Um, so, well, I'll make my way, and I plan on outpacing this woman. All right. Um, gosh. <laughs> what is your uh, bonus to... Mm, I think I want... Let's... You can give me acrobatics because there is a little bit of a crowd that has swarmed around. So you kind of weaving through there. What is your bonus to acrobatics? Plus five. Plus five. And my speed and my movement is forty. And your movement is forty. Yeah. No. Um. She has command to get through the wall, and so she does. Um. Keep up with you. Uh, that was a fourteen on the die plus her athletics to get through. Um. So you're aware. I'm just passive acrobatics to get through and out. Uh, she manages to um, keep up with you, but you are losing her as you get to the stockade. My little victory is that she gets that she's winded by the time she gets there. <laughs> uh, honestly, uh, you lose sight of her as uh, the stockade and the gallows that has been built up uh, come into sight. Um, and if you choose to enter into the building, um, you are passed by a figure in a cloak uh, uh, with a wooden rake. Uh, looks like someone who has been tending the garden. They greet you, and you walk into the stockade. Um, what you see um, are uh, a flagstone floor uh, in one corner, there is a very drunk dwarf. What you doing all robe there, cutie? Want to take a off and have a night with me? <laughs> uh, behind a very large desk at the front uh, and a little separator wall between um, <laughs> the drunk tank and it, you see uh, uh, another Toa guard uh, who looks up at you. Ignore him. He'll be fine in the morning. Um, what can I do for you? I was summoned here. Your captain, I believe. <laughs> you hear from Zeb. I was like, um, he is in a meeting with a few other people right now. Um, give me half a second. And she gets up, and as she goes, walks around, uh, yeah, Zeb's just kind of saying, hello, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm here. hey, who are you? And as the guard goes, looks over uh, where you know that Zeb is in the drunk take. What the hell? And instead of going to the office uh, where Captain Lothar is, presumably, she walks over to the drunk tank. You hear the jingle of keys. And what the... Ah! I will go rushing over to see what's going on. You do that. You hear a door opening behind you. Um, gosh, you know what, guys? Let's do this. Let's do this. Roll me initiative. Yeah. Yeah. We just had to delay it a little bit. That was a terrible initiative. <laughs> wow. <laughs> new bad. dice and same old fucking shit result. Uh, seven. Wow. That's great. Riley. 20. 20. Nice. <laughs> At least we've entered the game. 
entered the game. Is Our Cleo with us? Cleo is in the office. She is coming in behind you. I am a nice and wonderful DM. She is just in front of Anja with an eight. Oh, you know, there's this thing, this idea where you roll some dice ahead of time so that you are ready and absolutely good to go. Gosh, this is... Uh... I always mean to do that. Then I forget. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Let's... Oh, yes. My initiative is 15. I saw that in the thing, but thank you for saying it out loud. Otherwise, those poor audio people would once again <coughs> be completely lost in all things you do. There is a very large shifting behind the two of you, Anja, Riley, and Cleo, as the big, burly Captain Lothar rises up from behind his desk. Where is that? Okay. Wow, he is even worse than everybody else. Really? Worse he than is. me? Yes, he rolled a three uh, and has a plus two to dexterity. Oh, I feel wonderful having a giant scary image of myself uh, uh, grinning uh, behind me. I'm trying to remember that uh, <laughs> actor who it reminds me of. Um, it better be a goddamn handsome actor. You uh, he did War of the Worlds broadcast. Oh. Now I'm having a brain fart. Yeah. I'm going to have to look it up. Okay. Yes. Uh, so first and foremost, you hear the sounds of screaming and they... Oh, God, yes. They abruptly end... That was a 17 and a 15 on the die. <laughs> and they abruptly end, and the sound is just ripping and tearing. Bran, you turn around to the wall, and before all of you, you see these uh, canine-like faces tearing into the body of the Toa Guard, a brand that you had just been talking to. Um, grotesquely humanoid. Um, and you walk around just in time to see as one of them with their sharp claws rips off a hunk of calf muscle leans its head oh. back and then oh, oh, proceeds to swallow it down whole. What the fuck? And I'm going to need all of you to make a dread roll for me, please. Okay. And also beyond that, can I also make an insight check to see if uh, just like by witnessing that realize that maybe there's some similarity to the other people that had their muscles and things ripped out? <laughs> <laughs> Whether those... we'll save that for later because I feel like uh, 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 someone being torn off in front of you seems a little bit more important at the moment. All right. And it's just uh, a wisdom save, right? Uh, that is a hell. wisdom save. Let us, uh, let's start off with the order that it's going to be here very shortly. Uh, Riley, what Eight. is your wisdom save? Eight. Eight. Four plus four. Woo. Hey, Good mine was job. at least above a 10. Nice. Uh, <coughs> you have two additional levels. Oh, of no. Two you, additional. So I'm now at three. You're now at three. Acting like two. Acting right. like two. All right. So doo -doo -doo -doo. I should have this pulled up more often. Uh, let's go around to Bran. Bran got a 22 wisdom save. <sighs> This is absolutely grotesque, but uh, <laughs> you somehow, there are people who need to be helped right now. Um, down to Cleo, wonderful, good old Cleo. 
That is a cracked die. That is a 14 on the die. She is going to be fine. Anja. Anja got an 11. So it's borderline. You got a what? 11. 11. Two ones. Two ones. Does that count? Take two levels oh, of dread. Uh, so both yeah, you and um, Riley are both acting spooked. You what does cannot that... approach the source of the dread, which right now is a body being ripped in twain. You are a short distance away. Um, unfortunately, that's not within melee range. Well, is, it just um, fr- is it just frightened? Uh, essentially, it's frightened in this stage. I need to write <sighs> I don't know it, if you uh, get the penalty that's spooked. Yeah, do you get any penalties or is it just I can't or is it just a can't approach? on ability checks and you cannot approach while the source yeah. is still so it's just ability checks. It's not as bad as frightened. Mm. Right. All right, checks and can't approach. Riley, you are of course afraid, but you are acting spooked currently. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This doesn't affect things like Eldritch Blast, right? If I stay, if I don't approach. As long as you don't approach. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, and you see in the cell, there are these three canine figures that are currently feasting upon the body of the uh, Toa guard who greeted you when you first came in. And is this in the drunk tank? And, and if so, where's Zeb? This is in the drunk tank behind bars. You don't see Zeb necessarily. Okay. Uh, do I go first, or are we starting? You the do go initiative? first. Yes. Okay. Then I'll do um, shit. Uh, I guess I'll I'll just try and blast one of them. So where is my Eldridge blast? Here we are. Where is my Eldridge blast? And that was a seventeen to hit, the 17. one that just ate the calf muscle. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, 17 will hit. Okay. And uh, two damage. Two (laughs) damage. We are very impressed with you. You are great, Riley. Uh, Next down the list, we have Bran with a 15. All right. So a couple questions before I do an action. First off, is the cell open? The cell has been open. So there's a walkway through. Yes. Okay. Uh, second, these creatures, I will not say any names, three of them, are they wearing clothes? One of them appears to be wearing studded leather armor, the one that just swallowed a hunk of calf. Uh, the other two are kind of dressed in uh, basic. As the Um, with the Raven King's faith, you have been to several funerals in your time at the monastery. These look like funeral clothes that they are wearing. You mean the types where people are dressed in them as they're interred? Yep. Mm. But the figures that are in them now are animalistic canine features. uh, The smell of Death and decay is strong in the air. Uh, and even with that blast of Eldritch uh, energy, it has just made that smell even worse. Do I see how they entered into the cell? You see uh, upturned dirt inside the cell. Okay. All right. I will move towards the entrance, but will not enter the cell. I wish to try to well, uh, door jam them so we don't get, they can't come flooding out, but I don't get overwhelmed at the same time. Okay, sounds I good. wish to also leave like kind of a, uh, an ability to open up for Anja if she uh, steps up, because I do not know that she is spooked. Sure. Can I reach any from where I'm standing? Yeah, the uh, uh two smaller figures are the closest to the door and you could reach them. 
All right, then I will strike one of them. Sure thing. Uh, da, 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 da. So yeah, let's do unarmed attack. I will take out my dagger and strike with that first. Okay. Oh, a nat 20. Nice. Or oh, that extra damage. Oh, max damage of 11. Stab a bit. <laughs> All right. Yeah, just, wham. Then, is this a magical dagger, by the way? It is just a normal, average dagger. Oh, okay. Well, the magical? There. Yeah, yeah no, I have no worry. magic. We've, you, we've, had, we've got no magic in this game. What do you... I have my magic tablet. I'll yeah, smash one of the head with time. it. <laughs> yeah, smash him with that. <laughs> I kind of actually want to see that, please. <laughs> no, 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 no. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the thing, I'm going to give you the uh, stat block to your tablet, and it's going to be like, when you hit a creature with this, it does 3d20s worth of damage. And causes amnesia and absorbs the last day's memories. No, I don't know. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be something so, at like level good idea. 12 okay. or something. Go ahead, Brian. I will then use a flurry of a Kai point for a flurry of blows to do two additional attacks as a bonus action. Bonus action. Okay. So this will just be this will just be fist kicks and all that jazz. Yeah, all the great stuff. Ooh, nice. Uh, twenty three to hit. That's a hit. So this is all bludgeoning damage. Mm -hmm. Same one. Uh, yep. For okay. five. Okay. And then the final attack. That is only an eleven. Uh, that is just a miss. Okay. Uh, you hit it. And just the force of the blow pushed it back enough that it just kind of swings out of your reach for that last one, which brings us to the ghouls. Yeah. And they lunge forward at you, Bran, like vicious dogs uh, trying to protect their meal. All right. That is going to be a 20 for the first attack and a 19 for the second. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh. those hit. Okay. Good. I just want to make sure I'm screwing you up. Okay. Uh, we got... Man, do you guys play with dice at the ready? Because I don't. Yeah. I play with D&D &D Beyond. Oh, that's... D &D Beyond, yeah, you could everybody. just roll... Well, actually, you probably can't roll. I there. can't. Not you, but Kyle can't, because he doesn't have the creatures in there. I could, you I guess. Take 12 damage as these two creatures... <sighs> proceed to bite at your leg and one of them claws at your retreating fist um, and that is the end of their turn we pull up to one Miss Cleo in the background uh, and she passes out from fear it was <laughs> awful it was just terrible no I'm kidding let's go ahead she will cast Toll the Dead on the one that you've been attacking uh, and unfortunately it saves and that leads us to Anja you hear a bell tolling in the distance and you see as these creatures are tearing into the flesh of someone you had just spoken to not a second ago and begin devouring them so do you think it's the smell of death and rot that's uh, pushing you back? Or is it the the fact that something's now attempting to eat you? Eat me? You mean eat her? Yeah. Uh, no, that, I'm going to say the visuals, what's doing uh, Anja in. Yeah. Um, I guess I can't really approach. I mean, I can't technically approach the body. I could approach the other things. But I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do hunter Sense. Which is okay. an action, choose one creature you can see within 60 feet. I immediately learn whether the creature has any damage immunities, resistances, or vulnerabilities, and what they are if the creature is not hidden from divinate through the use of divination magic. Ah, so I I'm going to do that. Have something interesting to tell you. Oh, I'm sure you do, which is why I decided I was going to use that. 
<laughs> uh, were the ghouls listed in the bestiary that I bought? What do you mean? Were the ghouls listed in the bestiary book that I had? Oh, in okay. Studied? No, they are not. <laughs> um, got, uh, how much information? Uh, okay. Vulnerabilities. S- damage and immunities. Resistance or vulnerabilities. Okay. And uh, what they are? They are immune to divination magic. They're oh, uh, they what? have none. They don't have any. I thought. Oh, interesting. Because you asked if there was a weapon that was magical. So I guess that doesn't matter, huh? I do fun things to keep you. Yeah, you did. Okay, I just wanted to be sure. Oh, by uh, the way, that ghoul uh, brand is almost entirely destroyed. <coughs> um, as like a free action, I'm gonna whistle at them to try to get their attention because I can't fucking move to there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and hey, look, it's dinner, and um, I'm gonna do bonus action. I'm gonna put Slayer's Prey on not the next, whatever the next one will. Whatever the next one is in line, uh, because there's one that's almost destroyed. How many are there in there? There are two funeral two? ghouls that are funeral ghouls that are currently attempting to eat Bran. There is one in the background that is uh, been defiantly just kind of scarfing down as much guard as it possibly can. It is wearing studded leather armor. I, I said, I try to get up. God, I don't know what to do because I don't know which one, if I get any. Uh, I'll put it on that one. I'll, you know, I'll put it in that one. If worse comes to worse, I'll shoot it if I can. I got here. Oh, I have a crossbow. All right, yeah, I'll put it on. I'll put it on the one with the stud of leather. Okay. Uh, this is going to be at disadvantage due to the bars of the cage and the bodies in the way, which is brand two ghouls uh, in a very small area of a tank, okay? What's a disadvantage? Your shots. Oh, that's Not because a you're afraid, but because there's just right, so much right, right. right there. If it, if it even comes to that, I'd still rather use, I'd rather hit them. Mm-hmm. Is the guard still alive? Just wondering. We'll get to that on your turn. You ask, okay? Oh, well, okay. <laughs> okay, that would be, sorry, that is, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, did you take a shot or no? No, I can't. No, I used a bonus action and the slayers, oh, and the, action. the gotcha. hunters, hunters, the hunters, whatever the hell that was called, hunter sense is an action. Okay. And the, the you know, calling out Marking the prey there, so to speak. Slayer's prey is a bonus. The only thing I can't really do is move. I guess I could, on a move, I could pull out. Uh, you know what? For funsies, I'll draw one of my weapons. Sure. I'll so draw you said my... you just used an action and a bonus action, right? Right. So done. But no, but as part, I believe you can draw as part of a move. Or is sure. it part of an attack? I don't remember this version. <laughs> Whatever. Usually part of the attack. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Can you use a move action to draw, though? Yes, you can. Then I'm going to use it to draw out my... I'll draw out my scimitar. If worse goes to worse, I can't get it close, so I'll draw out my hand crossbow next time and take shots. All right. Uh, that leads <coughs> us to uh, Lothar behind you, and he comes scrunching in through the small door. Uh, and uh, just unable to kind of move around all this stuff, he runs up, and so he is right up next with you, Bran, uh, is this massive man with a huge scars running down his face, wielding in one single hand a great axe that is uh, easily as big as you, if not larger. And there's just fury emanating from this man. Uh, And that takes us back to the top of the round where the creature uh, in the studded leather um, proceeds to start digging. And it disappears underneath the ground. (laughs) 
and brings us back to Riley. What would you like to do? Uh, is that guard still alive? Uh, go ahead and make a medicine check for me, please. Oh. This is at disadvantage. Okay. Yep, 16. 16. Uh, by all no means, it does not look like it. There is wide eyes, a screaming face, but that looks like maybe the signs of shock. And this person is probably dead at this point. Shock, death, that deal. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's good to know. So, like, the two remaining... Do I see Zeb now? Uh, <laughs> you do not see Zeb. Do not see Zeb. You do not <laughs> see Zeb. Cool. Well, then I'm going to do something a little reckless. Um, so how big is this drunk tank? Uh, it is about 10 feet. Okay. And Bran and Lothar are still in the doorway, right? Still in the doorway. I would call them 15 feet. If you were to say from the back of the wall to where they're standing. Cool. Inside the cell where the two remaining people are, I'm going to put Cloud of Daggers. All right. What do I need to do right now? Um, you fill the air spinning daggers in a cube five foot on each side, centered on a point you choose within range. A creature takes 44 slashing damage when it enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there. And then it's concentration for one minute. So basically, at the beginning of their turns, they make saves or whatnot. No. When the spell is cast? they There is casting time, one action. There's no save. It's just you fill the air with spinning daggers, and if they're there, they oh, take 44 yeah. So at the beginning damage. of their turn. That's at the beginning all. of their turn for okay. one minute. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Good, Riley Brand, you are up. Blades are starting to appear out of nowhere uh, in the midst of these ghouls. Also, Large, I I um I speak and I say I, I cast cloud of daggers in there to so don't enter the cell. <laughs> Good advice. I, 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 I alert everyone else so they are aware that those daggers are mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will attack the same one I've been attacking with my single dagger because okay. yeah. I only got one. Uh, that's an 11, so that's going to miss. That misses. Given how last time. Uh, I will spend a my last high point. Okay. Do another flurry of blows, but I will make one attack, and then my second attack will be healing hand on myself. So, flurry of blows is a 12. To hit? Yes. That will do it. Excellent. So that'll be six points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. And then the healing hand of myself will be... Oh, nice, Max. So eight points back. Very nice. Okay. Uh, roll and your damage. That is my turn. Riley, 4d4. Uh, okay. As it is the start of their turn. Eight damage. Eight damage. Awesome. So both of these creatures, they see the blades coming. They start running out. Bran, you literally just bam, shove it back. And as you hear that crack of the neck, it proceeds to fall black, fall back into these <laughs> blades and proceed to be just completely eviscerated. It's like a blender unleashing holy hell of a smell Ugh. yeah yeah this is why That's... i wear the mask <laughs> it really does help doesn't it in these situations mm -hmm. this is why i don't wear especially when mask. you stuff it with all the herbs and spices in it mm. That's where all those go all right all right uh this ghoul will proceed to attack you however i am fairly certain a seven does not hit you no, it does not. Yeah, no, it does not. All right. 
Uh, and that takes us to Cleo. Cleo will... I've seen this work before. Gong! And uh, Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, sounds off a bell, uh, but the creature uh, shakes it off, which takes us to Anja. You right. should probably say, great, probably great Cthulhu instead of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, wait, where's, so wait, where's the one with the stud of leather right now? It has uh, apparently fled. It has dug a hole back down into the earth. Is anything within my reach? No. You kind of exited out the door. 15 more feet away is where Anj- all these creatures and fighting's going on. And Anja and I can't approach, right? Because of the dread? Because of the dread. So, yeah, so no melee range for us. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. So I'm going to draw my hand crossbow. Uh, it's part of a... It'll be part of the attack, I guess. And I'm going to do... I'm going to put Slayer's... What the hell? Slayer's Prey on... What have we got left? Wait, one or two? One funeral ghoul. All right, on that one funeral ghoul, I'm going to put it on there. It, it came out of the cell, though, right? It has tried to force its way out of the cell, correct. So do I still get disadvantage? You can have full attack. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you got this. I'll probably roll like shit. Oh, actually, yeah, I did not roll like shit. I see two digits here. Let's see. What, what two oh, digits? Oh, oh. That's a 15 on the die. That plus hit. six is 21. No, that misses, unfortunately. They have it's a too high. specific range. Too high, yeah. They're too high, right? Mm, that's right. <laughs> All right. And that's going to be 10 points of damage. Ten. <coughs> Yeah, because of the Slayer's Prey gave me an extra D6! And you fire this hand crossbow Die! right Again. into its eye, and it sinks down to the feathers and just slumps up against Captain Lothar and just shoves it off of him as it sloughs down to the ground. I'm thinking, damn, I could have really used that armor <laughs> that just disappeared. <laughs> I I blow on it like it's a gun. And let me make a couple rolls here. Yeah. All right. And that is the end of the combat. So did did the Cloud of Daggers kill the other ghoul that had the funeral close? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry. Between you and Bran, I was figuring, hey, let's do an Avengers moment. Bam! Got it. So between the two of you, you actually both did enough damage taking it down, uh, as well as enough that uh, Anja was able to kill the last funeral ghoul. I'll uh, I'll dispel the cloud of daggers. Mm-hmm. And also, um, just for reference, the cloud of daggers wasn't cast where it was touching the ground. I, I didn't want to mutilate the guard's body anymore. <laughs> than it already has been. (laughs) You've just covered it in stinking, stinking uh, humanoid canine flesh. Cool. I would like to enter the cell and uh, take an assessment of the area, the ground, their tunnels and whatnot quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, You take a look. The ground, uh, while soft, you try and stick in, try and dig in. You can dig, but it looks like the tunnel has been collapsed. I will turn to the others and kind of give a shake my head. We are not following them this way. Now that this is actually the the same look that occurred in the Munir or sorry the the crew members cell when we investigated that just a few moments ago. Yeah. Uh, I, Riley I, and hmm. Anja, give me a quick wisdom saving throw. Saving throw. Mm-hmm. Come on. Oh, that's better than the other one. 13 plus uh, 15. Okay, go ahead and drop that dread level one. You have defeated these monsters, although it is still just a macabre sight. Riley, 
I got an 18 on the uh, dread save or wisdom save. Drop it down one as well. Two suffering from one. I would like to go to the bodies at this point and start inspecting them. Uh, yes, you do so. Um, Zeb, the drunk dwarf who was, you know, cat calling you from his cell, uh, is no longer there. Uh, one of the bodies viscerated with that, uh, and it looks like the ghouls had eaten the Toa Guard, um, but have gutted her, uh, and she is dead. I will look back up at the captain and say to him, do you know what these things are? Do you know where they came from? Yeah, these are these are the ghouls that live in the tunnels. The tunnels? What tunnels? Underneath the island there's there's lava tubes from when the island formed and we use that to keep our city clean and that's where the the ghouls live and this is this is bad I look at the ghouls where do the ghouls come from hello right no, I mean, where do they come oh. from? And I actually literally kind of pull up some of the clothing. This is funeral clothing. Well, if you have Yogg's Athothry, give me a roll. If you do not, ghouls are common enough. They are undead creatures that feast on people. They have a paralyzing touch and bite when they attack. Um, and they are quite evil. Uh, you do notice blood pouring out of these undead creatures, though. And the Yog sothri checks, please. Uh, 15. 14. 15 and 14, both are yeah. good enough. Um, since, since they are undead, may I make a religion roll? Uh, you may. Yes. While that's going on, uh, to answer your uh, Yog Sothri, though, you would know these to be living ghouls. The ghouls that most people refer to as undead creatures are actually undead versions of living ghouls. Um, humanoid monstrosities, uh, they live and feast off of creatures that are long dead. And the only reasons they would feast on a living creature and this fresh would probably mean that it's a starving ghoul close to madness. Uh, your religion check, Bran. Was it 21? Was it 21? Yeah. Um, you are very familiar with uh, the undead ghouls. Um, but like I said earlier, these are bleeding. Um, and there has been rumors that, and this is some dark stuff, especially for the Raven Queen. These are carrion eaters. Um, and this is only rumor, whether you're sure of it or not carrion eaters actual living creatures thinking feeling humanoid creatures who who eat the dead will often dig up interred bodies uh, uh, to feast upon well, to me that is completely and utterly unacceptable So, so you my, know of these you know of these creatures and them living under the tunnels. God, this would explain a few things of why that graveyard is so small. Wow, this is amazing. Quietly. I'm gonna say that very <laughs> quietly into Brand's ear. I do look at Riley a little odd. 
even though we probably can't tell. <laughs> I cannot tell, but I think this is just fascinating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I will look at the other. I will look at the other since I have not been here. Since- what is going on? I heard there was something going on with the mutineers. Well, at least I... Oh, guess... actually, I stop and look at the captain. The accused mutineers. Right. They escaped their cells. And I was hoping that you had sprung them free. Clearly not, okay. since I was just at a collapsed wall incident. The interesting thing is there's not a mass quantity of blood. There's not uh, body parts or anything like that left in the prison. It was empty. But yet the soil here looks very much like the soil there. I mean, Zeb, there was no blood from leftover from Zeb as well, correct? He was just missing. There is He's a also lot missing, yeah. of blood. Uh, thanks to a spray of daggers cutting up. <laughs> yeah, but got wasn't it. there a lot of blood? We got, we got, we got, uh, we got one of those splash paintings, you know, where you take the brush and just go across yeah. the wall. Well, Anja, it looks like Dexter. Anja and Riley know that they have a paralyzing touch, so it's likely that some people were actually taken back. Anja paralyzed. and Riley... Uh, Anja and Riley know that the undead ghouls have a paralyzing touch. Oh, okay. Not these are these. living ghouls. They will, if animated by necromantic energy, uh, will become worse than zombies. They will become the undead version of ghouls, which is where they get their paralytic touch. Um, with my religion check, since I seem to learn a little bit about them as well, mm-hmm. would uh, could I take the leap of logic and make a theory assumption that the reason why they would take living creatures is to literally kill them and make them corpses since they like corpses better. Interesting. It's an interesting leap of logic. Just like a spider, they don't they they like to let their the insides of their victims turn to liquid so they can drink it. Yeah. Sort of the same concept. Like I said, dirty little rumors that you've heard uh, blasphemous rumors uh, about grave robbers that could be attached to these ghouls. Yes, they do like to go after older corpses. Uh, okay, so fresh very corpses are kind of out. well-to-do corpses. So, where we retrieved Jeremiah from, could that have potentially been a ghoul larder? Potentially. There were bodies you... in storage, mm-hmm. although it was quite strange that if they were feasting on Jeremiah while he was alive, but you now have evidence of ghouls eating very fresh corpses. Um, I look at their claws, actually, and their teeth. Mm-hmm. Do their claws or teeth look like what would have, what could match um, what injured Jeremiah and the other corpses? Because as you said, it was not a, a surgical tool, but it was used very expertly. Hmm. Uh, you take a look at their claws. Um, one of them are completely scraped and kind of bare down with little bloody fingertips. Uh, the other one uh, does have a pinky uh, uh, claw um that this was the one that was biting at you and wasn't really clawing at you uh, uh um oh sorry no the other way around this was the one clawing at you it has enough claws on its hand that um yes you could see where if these were a little bit sharper um and used precisely with knowledge and precision that it could indeed uh have been used to carve flesh. Um, mm. And we're going to go ahead and take that question a little bit further. If you examine the guard's body, uh, while a very rushed job, it does look like the main thing it did was carve out a hunk 
of flesh from the calf, which you then watched it swallow before it started ripping and tearing as much flesh and shoving it into his gob as it could. Mm. Gob, the technical term. Yes, the mouth. Um, all right. We live in the lava tunnels, which we have been into. This would make... The logic does point to one another. Look, um, I love it. If your crews are underneath the tunnels, I think I can get you to an entrance that'll be quick and as close as possible. But I ain't going to be able to go down with you. When do we? Yeah, I kind of look at him and kind of like I, I can understand that actually. Yeah, he is a huge, massive body of flesh. Uh, I just want to say that. And wearing that plate armor. He's not squeezing into any place. Um, but he goes and he starts walking to the other side of the building. Hey, uh, Cap, this, this place is not safe to talk, is it? Is it? There's no one else here at the moment. And honestly, there are lives at stake. If you can get Zeb, you find your crew. I don't think we have to worry about anything. Oh, I think there's plenty to worry about around here. <laughs> um, and as he there's walks probably across, no chance to rest. I know. The sad thing is, no chance to, to you. There's no chance to change out my armor. I want. I want to get a lighter set of armor, so I can be more sneaky. Um, the guard has some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. no. Wow. The stud wow. of leather would have been nice, but it would have been it's gross. It's fine. Uh, even, even if I don't have Kai points, we need to at least see what we can do. Yeah, I'm yeah, quite I, excited. We, I can't wait. I can't wait. No, we're I can't. Uh, Actually, I guess that's another question too. Riley, do you have spells anymore? Yeah. I only casted okay. one. Oh, because the other fun. one was a cantrip. Yeah, and I I'm a, almost always use cantrips and I'm at full health. So. Okay. <laughs> All right, I can. Uh, I will stop and like kind of warn everyone. I would need time to rest if I was to heal anybody. That's fine. I have right wounds. now. I cannot do much, although I do have my medical pack, so I can do a little. And I also have uh, another spell slot, and I can cast cure wounds as well. What about? Oh, actually, I do have I some do healing have... potions too. Luckily, I mean, I have good berry, but I've been thinking that I probably shouldn't use it. I'm thinking what, I'm going to be changing that spell out. Oh, no, what I have two Cleo? healing. She yeah, what heal, about right? Cleo? Oh, Cleo has everything. Yeah, so I think I think we're set. Okay. I, will, I just let them know. I'm, I can be effective, but I won't be as effective. But there is no time to wait. Show us this entrance. And he walks you away, and, you know, thank goodness, because the smell was uh, overbearing. And he walks over to another door, pulls open the handle, and you see a very small five by five foot room with a plank with a hole in the center of it. Seriously. And he lifts up the lid to the refuse tunnel. I'll go first. <laughs> You sure. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. My, I mean, Riley is pretty excited about this. So, I you think, sure uh, you want to go first? I kind of look at the, I kind of look at the captain, like, really. The only this... tunnel that gets you as close as possible. Yeah, we can and do this. You can just see, you know, his armor would not fit in there, nor would maybe one of his legs. Uh, let's see. And we will say Cleo has no interest in going down there either because it is disgusting. However, she does twin spell for two of you, uh, Shield of Faith. 
Which two? <laughs> Which two would like it? I think I would. Brand can have the other one. Yeah, the, I guess we're the meleeers, so I guess that makes mm. sense. Yeah, I, I have a natural armor. Um, also, I, I let well, Brand. Do you want to let? Well, actually, let's let's ask this. Does Cleo know where Jeremiah is at right now? I don't know if she would want to. Jeremiah is at my place. Yeah, I know. I don't know if Cleo knows that. So I didn't know if like Cleo. Well, I will let her there. <laughs> yeah. How long does Shield of Faith last? Ten minutes. And what is it? Let's see. A what plus two, two to AC. All right, I head down. You head down. Uh, did anyone need any healing before they head down? I don't. Yes, I need a little bit. Okay. Yeah, Cleo, just tap me up. Bam. Eight points of healing. More? More than enough. All right. She just gives you uh, seven more just for the hell of it. I don't and have seven more. all her <laughs> spells. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, Riley, you wanted to go down the uh, tunnel first? Oh, yeah. Okay. Who goes after Riley? I will. Uh, I guess okay. I'm at the back. You're at the back. What kind of armor are you currently wearing? Heavy, medium? Me? Like, yes, you, Lancha. Uh I assume it's heavy uh, chain. What the hell is it? What am I wearing? I want to trade it out. That's what I want to do. Scale mail. Scale? Yeah, oh, it's medium. medium. Med it's medium. medium. Okay. I had to go to it. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit difficult for you to climb into. Um... No, the... I'm assuming we literally take the box that's the seat out. Yeah, or else I don't think people are getting in. It lifts up there, you know. You can wash <laughs> it out, and the top, you know, three feet is actually fairly clean. It looks like they dump a a bucket of water down there every once in a while, just to keep the smell from going too awful. Um, you climb on down. Um, give me each a D one hundred roll, please. Yay. Yeah, my favorite. Are we going Call of Duty style rules here? Lower is oh, better. Usually. Well, 59. So in the middle. 45. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this makes perfect sense because, you know, after that first couple of feet, you find fecal matter and all <laughs> sorts of nasty. Uh, rank smells proceed to fill your nose. Um, the mask is the best. The mask is the best as um, you know, you climb down there and Riley, you are at the bottom of this line of people who are also wading through shit and while the shit drops down below you, the shit they knock off on top comes down to you. Just like walking the streets in the morning in a Rukatan. <laughs> <laughs> Rukatan is a very clean city, thank you very much. Give me a constitution saving throw. Oh, okay. Let's see. Con save. Nat that's 20. That's like, I was going to say, that's your best save, right? <laughs> no. no. Charisma no, is my best. It is great. Con is uh, my second to worst. <laughs> all right. And... With a uh, 59, I would like a con save from you as well, Anja. As you're just moving around and, you know, you just brush some After sweat all the nope. out of your eye. What'd you nope. roll? Nine. Nine. Oh. Okay. Let me write that down. Oh, good. I don't even find out the effect now. Maybe there is no effect. You could have made the save. These DZs nice. DC uh, are very low. It would surprise you. The dread. I like to roll... Look, I can't pretend to roll <laughs> dice for Riley. He rolled a nat 20. Of I course, know. he made the save. But we'll see if you uh, get something or not. This is fascinating. This is a novel experience to Riley. I think he's after... taking notes. Novel. I think yeah. after no. what I just saw, after what I just saw, my stomach is on edge as it is. So this probably. Well, if you're gonna I, throw up, this is the place to do it. 
I didn't roll a nat one, so she's holding it together, but it's hard. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any source of light down here? And does everyone have dark vision? <laughs> uh, I have the guy dark vision. above you does not. I figured. I just wanted to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you are crawling down this little vent tube. Um, slime, muck. There is some funny stuff growing off the walls. Mold. Maybe you write a little bit of that down there. Um, at some point, you see uh, slightly undigested potatoes. Uh, definitely the Carolina gold. Oh, uh, variety. Oh, um, I have a quick potatoes. Question. Does um, Cleo have light spell? I do. I have a light. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll cast it right on your chest. Well. No, not on Just the like chest. Just like Iron Man. Let's, now you can see. You can take whoever's light spell you want, whoever will cooperate with you. I will pull out a torch and just tell him to put it on the end of the torch. But and don't so, you want your hands free for flurry of blows? Have you seen me? Uh, yeah, you use your hands a lot. Yes, I can also use any part of my body for that. Oh, okay. I'll uh, cast light on the end of the torch for some reason. And then I'll, I'll, so I'll hold the torch in one hand and the dagger in the other. Um... Actually, no, I won't hold the dagger in the other. I'll just have an open fist in case I need to catch arrows oh, or ballistics. Uh, Riley, did you roll the 15 on the Yogg-Sothothery? 14. 14. Anja okay. got the 15. Anja, yeah. just as a little side note here, you yeah. know that living ghouls devour flesh to gain knowledge from the dead person. The oh, older the corpse, the more they learn. I don't tell Riley this. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, seriously, why not? Why don't you tell Riley this? How can I take advantage of the information? That would be bad. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hey, are you I'm, denying knowledge I to mean, Riley? I, Literally the knowledge that they I, do this? I mean, I, I'd be very pissed off if I learned this later that you didn't tell me. I mean, think about it. The next thing you know, Riley's trying to get himself turned into one of these ghouls so he can literally eat knowledge. Come on, you don't see where this is going? There's a gleam in his eye. I see it. (laughs) And I will bet you they can tell you exactly how they do it in the mausoleum. For the right price, sure. Yeah, for some gold. I think that's, yeah, 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 (laughs) yep. I see, like, this is a bad idea. I don't, I I don't know what you know and don't know. So honestly, it, it, I I don't think Andrew would directly withhold that information. More like, she, she wouldn't really think about the fact that you didn't know because you seem to know everything so no I, <laughs> I'm, I'm learning I obviously don't know everything <laughs> fine I will say it at this point I will I will say it huh well there's a reason why they they eat old corpses because they get more information that way these oh. kind of ghouls literally learn from Probably. I wonder if it's from the actual memories and such of the creatures they eat. That's actually pretty cool. It reminds me of a dream where some being was just eating a bunch of orbs and absorbing. No, I'm just joking. I'm not going to bring <laughs> that, that up right horrible. now. That is horrible. It oh, is blasphemy. Oh, blasphemy. You and your religion. Horrible. Defiling uh, corpses wish... alone is horrible. Do we know Learning how... their knowledge and their secrets by devouring them. Yep, we literally have no idea how big these, how far these tubes go in, right? Do we? I mean, under the entire island, supposedly. I mean, this entire island was formed by a volcano, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're everywhere. Formed I by think Cthulhu. I'm. I think I'm gonna cast. What are you while doing? I'm what are you doing, Kyle? Me, I am foggy right now, and I'm trying to fix it real fast. I'm out uh, of focus. All right, hang on. I think I'm going to cast uh, protection from evil and good on myself. Sure, you can do that. All right, let's proceed. Okay. okay. Yeah, I move forward. Yeah, you descend um, 
30 or so feet through this awful slurry of mixture, uh, find your footing and you find yourself sliding down a little bit further and you end up in this dark tunnel uh, very similar to the one you had seen earlier. It's kind of this pumice rock. However, it's been degraded. So there's a bit of dirt on the floor. Um, it's smoothed on the floor quite a bit, actually. Uh, and in occasion here and there, you see uh, uh, stalactites, stalagmites, and little bits of roots sticking out, especially when the light of the torch comes down. Uh, and it's a tunnel that leads farther down. You would judge that it is towards the direction of the cells in the stockade. Oh. Would you like to go first? Yes. Okay. No longer asking your order. You decide to go first forward. Um, and the air grows warmer, damper, and there's that coppery tinge to the air. And the tunnel opens up into this, um, kind of oval shaped cavern. There are several more stalactite stalagmites here and there. There are bones littering the floor and you see figures, faces um, between these peaks of rocks. And as Bran's light comes in, you see the Olo triplets. You see. Oh, sorry, the Waikat triplets, Ade, Olo, and Matwa, uh, standing a little bit taller than normal. You see Banda and Kasa, the twin half elves, uh, and you see Nebi. Uh, impaled on one of these stalagmites. And oh. all of them have been um, had their organs, their sweetbreads ripped out and are hanging in various positions pinned to the walls in certain places as their flesh is slowly dribbling out this black oozing blood. The corpse of Zeb is currently swinging from a pair of ropes and hooks. And there are a couple other bodies as well. Um, mission accomplished. <laughs> I, we, we found the crew and Zeb. <laughs> I literally, I literally just, I don't want to blow anybody's eardrums up, but I literally scream in friggin' frustration and anger. And I guess horror. Yeah. <sighs> Kyle DM. Yes. And okay. and I don't I, just, I, I pick up a rock or something and just throw it. They need to do something. Hey, you pick up a rock. Do you throw it at the bodies? No, no, no. I'm just like throwing it at the wall because I'm just so friggin' angry at all this. Yeah. Throw it at the wall. You yeah. shatter the stone that you threw. Um, I mean, I could. This, 
right here. Okay, that was not a nat one. If it was a nat one, that would hit one of the buttons. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to give you uh, some benefit. You can throw a rock. Um, yeah. Um, you can uh, go through to the bodies. Um, do you I want to see if I can identify the, the bodies that I don't <laughs> recognize. Because sure. I'm sure I want to know who they are and their families may want to know. So I'll, yes, I'll go. I'd like to move up to the closest body and, and investigate that black liquid that's coming out of their skin. Uh, the black liquid is blood. Okay, it's it, just it normal is blood. Just dried out and it looks like they're bleeding the flesh dry. Um, this patience thing I know is great yeah so you look uh, start um, checking out the bodies um, you're kind of trying to identify who's going on there Riley Yep. and you see uh, another body. It looks like three extra bodies are among uh, the crew and Zeb. One is a guard's body. Um, also fairly mm, fairly fresh. And then two others. And these look like they had the top halves of their skull ripped off and to the point where you would see the uh, brain sitting there. There's just nothing there but skin growing in this hollow. There shouldn't be skin on the inside of someone's ripped open cranium. Roll for initiative. I, I take notes. As this is amazing. This... <laughs> you take notes. As the jaw on these two creatures open up and proceed to lash out at you and Bran. Well, better than the last initiative, but yeah. great. Well, that was the 19 plus their stealth to hide amongst the corpses. Roll for initiative, guys. Okay, 10. And I will show you the other one here shortly. Sorry. 11. Oh, no, 10. sorry, 14. 17. 14, 17, Riley, Bran. Okay. This is where it gets real bad, guys. Hey, um, it's been within the 10 minutes, right? It has been within the 10 minutes. You do have that. I am not that cruel a DM. I am. Uh, you are, but you know. 14. All right. Oh, he is hidden very well. Okay. So these two creatures peer off, no eyes, huge ears, long open mouths as they open up to take a bite out of you, Riley. That is going to be a 15 to hit. Uh, AC 16. Ah, and a, nope, that is going to miss as well, a 12. For you, Brand. <laughs> That is a natural 20 on the die. Oh, fuck. This is going to hurt. Just a 9 for the other one. Okay. Let's see. Where are my D12s? There we go. Holy shit. Okay. That is 15, 17 piercing damage as this takes you by surprise and just takes a chunk uh, on your shoulder biting through, but not quite uh, uh, tearing into the thick robe you wear. <sighs> Neither of these creatures are wearing studded leather armor, though. <laughs> Anja? Yeah. The yep. one that stealth behind you is. Oh, fuck. It's that, it's that one. 
All right. That's that one. And All right. I, let me see what this does. Because it's undead. Creatures, uh, you have disadvantage on attack rolls against me. Living ghouls. And they're not undead. They're not considered undead? They no. are not considered undead. They're monstrosities. All right. Mm -hmm. And humanoids. Um, so that is going to be a 21 to hit, Anja. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, luckily, it's only a D4 worth of damage, and I rolled a 1. So that's 4. But he is a very, very sneaky creature. And that is 10 points of extra piercing damage. On top of that? On top of that. So 14 total. All right. Bran, you have yourself a wake-up call as you hear Anja screaming behind you and you have something latched onto your shoulder. What would you like to do? So I will do what I can and just attack twice, once with an action and once with a bonus action. Okay. Uh, this will be bludgeoning. Uh, okay. This is all fists, kicks, knees, all that jazz. Mm -hmm. So first attack is a miss with a nine. Mm -hmm. Second attack is a 14. That is also a miss. Oh, Jesus. All right. That is my turn. All right. Riley, you're up. Woo! All right. Um, <laughs> so they're too close for Eldridge Blast, so I'm going to try and uh, dagger. Okay. If I DD D Beyond lets me. So that is a 21 to hit. 21 will hit. And seven damage with my dagger. I did max. Nice. That's more than your Eldridge Brass usually. Well, yeah, my Eldridge Blast <laughs> is 1d10, <to> so it's <laughs> kind of odd, but. All right, the large, empty-headed creatures are first, uh, and that is going to be a 10 and a 22 to you, Riley. Uh, 22 hits. 22 hits, and that is going to be do, 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 a lot of damage. Four, five, oh, uh, take seven slashing damage as its claw rakes across you. The other one, I have a 15 and an 18 against you, Bran. That will miss because of the Shield of Faith. Thank you, Cleo. There you go. Uh, yeah, so just swipe. This bubble of light kind of bursts in front of you as it goes to take another bite. And it, uh, uh, shines and kind of sears its eyeless face um, which takes us to the gentleman behind you Anja and he rolls a 23 to hit Jesus Christ alright this is bad this is really bad and that is 6 piercing damage plus 10 no 6 just piercing six. damage Sneak attack, the first attack. Oh, okay, okay. He okay. made himself very aware at that moment, and so you are on the defense towards him, although he is a little bit trickier with that first attack. Uh, Anja, you are up. All right, so Slayer's Prey, bonus action, action to hit. Come on, damn it, I need it now. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, that's a 14, I know that misses. That unfortunately misses. It wasn't right. a terrible roll either. Bran, we are at the top of the round. Once again, uh, two unarmed attacks, one action, one bonus action. Mm -hmm. That'll be a hit with a 22. Nice. For seven bludgeoning. Okay. And then a follow up of a 21. Hit. Or four bludgeoning. So a total of 11. Very nice. All right. Riley. Dagger again. Dagger, dagger. Dagger, dagger. Mm -hmm. And that is a 12. I miss. That is indeed a miss. God. Okay. This uh, creature 
uh, next to you, Riley, proceeds to grab onto one of the stalagmites and pries and rips it out of the ground. Uh, unfortunately, is unable to do so. <laughs> the other one attempts to do the same thing to you, Bran. Now the dice leave me. Come on, I had three natural 20s right at the top of the round here. And now it's a four and a three. And screw you guys. Uh, I'm going to kill you, Anja, with the guy behind you. Oh, they are. Uh, and that one. Woo! Three, but. Oh, enough. it looked like a one with your blurry ass camera. Right? <laughs> I spent $20 to get a nice camera, and it's uh, turning into a hunk of, hunk of burning. All right, so I'm going to guess you missed this time. I yes. did miss. This is. Thank old... freaking God for that. Honky. Did I screw everything up? Yeah, you're no longer there. Um, what the hell no did you do? Here. Oh, I see. He's still on here. here he is. Yeah, yeah, don't think he, he didn't mess up the cameras at all, right? I hope I didn't, but we'll no, find didn't. out with your turn, Anja. All right, now I'm going to make two attacks. You're still where you're supposed to be. Yeah. At the top, the head of the table. That was much better. 16 plus 6 is 22. That misses. Go ahead. What? <laughs> and 17? Damage? No. To hit. To hit. The second one. I'm rolling two hits. Both of those hit. Yes. Okay. So that's going to be 3d6. <coughs> Hang on one moment. Mm -mm -mm. I don't try to remember what the hell I took. <laughs> oh, I don't have any feet yet. Let's see. Well, you have two feet. Yeah, no, I'm trying to remember what the hell I took from my. Um... Yeah, I have two feet. So I like to dance on them. Uh, I think I only add my. I think I only add what my ability modifier to one of these. I think. Oh, oh that was. The. I was trying to figure. I don't think so. What? Dual wielding uh, fighting style? Uh. What the hell is the freaking fighting cell? I believe so. Is that the one that gives it to you, or is it? That's the one that gives it to you. Okay. All right. Yeah. I sh so I'm trying to find place. the damn fighting style. That's all. You're fine. Assume you have it, and yeah, two you're weapon wrong, fighting. You're about, yep, 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 yep. It okay. was okay. Is that so? I rolled really well though on my two okay. attacks. So that's okay. Tw Twelve and three is fifteen plus eight is twenty three points of damage. 23. Thank this you for asshole. A nice round number for me. Yeah, you cut it real good with those two attacks. Uh, back to the top of the round. Bran, this creature just tried to <coughs> shove uh, uh, some rocks on top of you. I will once again try to smack its face into those rocks with my fists, hips, and knees, and elbows, and all the, all the joints. Ooh, ooh. Come on, Bran. Why am I doing that? First, uh... <laughs> I should roll my attack before I roll damage. Uh, 20 to hit for 4 damage. That's a dirty okay. 20. And then, it is a very dirty 20 right now. Uh, 23 to hit for mm -hmm. uh, 6 damage. Oh, nice. Now I'm starting to lay into it with uh, the pressure points and the cracking of bones. Yeah, you still stuff. go in that and, you know, just stick your finger into a neck pressure point and it leads its head directly into that stone, as you said, uh, cracking it very well. Uh, Riley, you are up. Yeah, so, um, I am going, how, so, let's understand the layout a little bit. Are we still just mixed in this big oval chamber, <laughs> and how big is this chamber? 15 feet wide, 25 from the entrance on back. You guys are kind of mixed in there, um, separated. You would have to kind of uh, move a short distance to get everyone's a short distance away from each other. Cool. It's like they so, planned this attack to separate you. How? Ha 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 ha. <coughs> how far away is the entrance to this room behind me? Is it like 15 feet? 
Oh, about so, yeah. Okay. I'm I'm gonna use my bonus action to cast Misty Step and jump back to the the entrance of the room. So you'll be I... next. You'll be right next to. Uh, I'll be the behind big guy the one and... attacking Anja. Hopefully. Okay. Uh, yes, you do so, that. Um... I'm gonna do that as my bonus action. Mm-hmm. And now, hopefully. Um, I can come up behind the one on Anja and attack it with my dagger. Go for it. Do I need to have any skills to actually do that stealthily and get bonuses? I don't know well, how the stealth are attacks we, work. Are we this. doing? Are we doing the uh, variant rule for? Um, I don't remember. Flanking? Are we doing the variant for flanking? I will make you have that decision now. Just keep in mind whatever. You I would get. suggest no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because uh, always it's yeah. advantage. Flanking is too complicated. We don't need that shit. Okay, um, then. then yeah, probably you, need to be, be great. you need to be hidden from the opponent to gain advantage if you want to sneak. Well, I'm I'm behind it, and it's it engaged with matter. Anja, so I would assume. But it doesn't you're not know a rogue. <laughs> you know? No, but I'm well, not wearing. Any I guess armor it comes either. down to does Misty Step make any sounds or awareness? Yeah. D100. D100. Okay. Oh, good. That's always good. Don't roll an op zero. Uh, a thirty-six. No, you don't want to roll an oh, uh, a ninety-nine. Yeah, you don't want Not to roll zero high. is good. No, no, op zero is one hundred. As you guys oh, know, odd zero. Yeah, yes. Uh, teleportation is a very dangerous business. If you stay too long, go too far, most people don't come back from wherever they disappear to. Um, the only real knowledge of what gets brought back from the other side is whatever smoke comes out of a misty steps. And sometimes there'll be screams on the other side. Sometimes oh, so it's... it will give an awful smell. You, however, have lucked out and whatever smoke you brought back is actually quite silent. I will go ahead and uh, give you a bonus to the attack. Go ahead. Silent but deadly? That's bonus not... I bonus to hit too. or bonus to damage or both? We will see. Okay, well, my dagger, I rolled a 21 to hit. That'll hit. And I <laughs> did max seven damage. Nice. Uh, this creature, oh my gosh, yeah. Mm. We'll give you a little bit of extra damage there to that tech as you drive the dagger deep into its back. It was surprised by this. All right. (coughs) And just that pain look of it trying to reach behind you. Uh, Bran, hey, I have some great news. Uh, There are now two of these creatures in the room with you, and they come over to say hi. Sorry about that. Andre was almost down. (laughs) I've got 10 hit points left. It, uh, <laughs> I'm not looking great. No, I'm not looking great, but I mean, I probably wouldn't have left him alone. Uh, well, I'm hoping that we can okay. knock this one out pretty fast and yeah. then go support Bran and we can all be regrouped. Roles yeah. I have are two 16s, Bran. Uh, so I matrix dodged them all. <laughs> <laughs> Good and job, They Bran. are swinging wildly at you. Uh, but the viscera, uh, uh, some of the intestines are just kind of getting in the way of these swings. Um, which gives me the crypt guy. And that is a natural 20. What? To one backstabbing little prick. Oh, it turned uh, around and hit me with a nat 20. It turned around and hit you with a nat 20. Oh, shit. I see your extra damage. I raise you a nat 20. Yeah. <laughs> it goes to reach back, and as it does, it turns its back on you, Anja, and literally strikes towards your face. Uh, since is... since he didn't disengage, is that attack of opportunity for Anja? It no. is not because he does not have to disengage to attack someone who is right behind him. Ah. It's this very quick moment. Uh, nine, nine. Take 12 slashing damage. Okay. Let's get those. Better uh, you than me. That's actually not bad for a nat 20. 
Get that sneak attack going. I mean, that's, that's, wait, kidding. how is he getting kidding. a sneak attack? Just kidding. Is it a swashbuckler? <laughs> There's a fourth one. <laughs> There's a fourth one behind you, Riley. <laughs> yeah, drops down from the stalactite. <laughs> All right, Anja, you are up. Uh, I'm going to roll this one at a time. He looks pretty beat up, right? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to roll this one at a time. Come on. I mean, yeah. Oh, no, that's a nat one. Fuck! That, that, uh, that misses. Or oh. hits in your dreams. <laughs> in my dreams, yeah. Okay, well, that's not a nat one. So with my short sword, I, I roll a 23. That'll hit. Let me just check something here and how that works. Okay, yeah, it's the first time I hit, not the first hit I make. So just want to make sure I could still get my damage there. Uh, five and four is nine points of damage. Nine points of damage. Yep. And that was the last critical hit it ever made in its life. <laughs> as it turns its back to you and in one motion end its life. All right, and I get a move action. So I'm going to move over to Bran. I assume I'm within yes. 30 feet of him. Mm-hmm. I'm going to move towards Bran. Okay. So we are going to reunite. And it feels so good. All right, Bran, you are up. All right, let's do this again. Uh, unarmed strike. Mm-hmm. Why am I rolling damage first? Oh, that's an at 20, so I got to reroll the damage. Ten bludgeoning to the first one. Nice. It's still up. Mm-hmm. Dear Lord. Uh, second attack is a sixteen. That'll hit. <coughs> for six points of bludgeoning. So sixteen total this round. Six. Jeez. Yeah, that one wavers uh, and immediately goes to. It takes a dirty swing at you, Bran, to try and trip you up. Give me an athletics or acrobatics. Acrobatics of ugh, nine. Wait, what, why is it attacking? Is this like oh, a reaction a reaction attack or something? Uh, oh my gosh, Riley. I'm, uh, wait. Yes, Riley, you go first. I apologize. Keep that dot. No, no, we'll re-roll it. Dirty bitch. Uh, uh, Riley, I, go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna throw Eldridge Blast now. Okay. And Are you going after the one that had been attacking you, or the one uh, on the far side of Brand? Uh, I probably don't have a clear line of sight on the one on the far side of Brand, do I? So I'm gonna go on the the one that was attacking me. You can move up if you like. No. Okay. And that was a 14 to hit. A 14 misses. Ah, damn it. Okay. Been now, rolling a lot of those tonight. Brand, go ahead. You can re-roll. I will as well. Although I will say I also rolled a lot better than I did last time as well. Oh shit. I did not. It was only a 10 now. <laughs> well, to I'd be fair, the... I got a 10 last time and I got a 19 this time. So oh, no. it proceeds to uh, swipe at your legs and as you try and move up, it just knocks your feet out from under you. Uh, and then tries to uh, claw you with its other hand with advantage. That was 218. So I imagine a 22 will hit you, correct? Yes. Okay. That is going to be five. And that die disappeared forever. That is nine points of slashing damage. The other creature. Um, you got another target now, so. Yeah, because Anja's there as well. Yeah. Just so you have options. Uh, that's an 81. Also, uh, well, you'll find out why. It decides to attack you with a natural 20. Who? On a bite. Sorry, this is Bran. Oh, shit. Okay. And a 23 with a claw. So what the have... frick? So roll the nat 20 damage first. Yeah, no, that's awful. That's 12, uh, 14 damage. Yeah, I'm at zero. 
And then that brings me down to two death saves oh. for the other damage. That does, Are yeah. You... Let's make this exciting. Oh, God. You, I rolled an 81 on the percentile die, so you know we're going to be mean about this. So I'm down, uh, to one death, I'm down to one save now. You have one death save. Uh, then the sneaky guy gets up from faking his own death. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Anja, go ahead. You're I'm up. gonna murder you. Uh, <laughs> I look at I look, I briefly look at um, Riley. Like you get, can you pick him up? And I'm gonna take. Oh, I gotta, I got no, I gotta put uh, prayers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Prayers slay. Yeah, there we go. Slayers pray mm-hmm. on the one that just did that to. Uh, brand and i'm gonna is that that thing that allows you to get more information from it as well no 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 i'm just doing extra damage i don't i'm beyond reason at this moment so Uh, i'm not thinking about that sort of thing plus there are more ghouls Mm -hmm. jesus wait a minute make sure what did i just roll yeah that's what i thought i just rolled fucking terrible that's an 11 that misses i'm sorry uh, which... This one I needed it, you know. Right. <coughs> uh, Bran. Oh come oh, on. Oh Bran. <laughs> Are you going right, to see the Raven Queen? It's been a while since I've made a saving death saving throw. So what am I oh, going to Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Shit, I. Uh, like a ten. Damn it. D twenty. Fucking did something else. D twenty. Here we go. That's a nat twenty. I'm back at the one hit point. It is an at 20. <laughs> Holy crap. All right. I see <laughs> in front of me on the screen. Uh, he's actually a dirty liar. That's an at one. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me. I'll be right back. As you are attempting to catch your breath, um, Again, this warm, hot, burning, stinging pain from your shoulder jolts you up and awake. Not yet. You come when I ask you to. And you find yourself on the floor between these two creatures. Riley, you are up. Uh, Yeah, Eldridge Blast again. All right. (laughs) <laughs> miss with a nine. Oh no <laughs> I, I get a plus seven by the way I rolled a two <laughs> got a plus seven jeez yeah. gosh you know Bran I'm going to have to do this to you though I feel obligated to do this to you uh, so I'm going to have one of them kick you well, can't see what uh, it is. Is that a one? That is a one on a on a, on a D one hundred. Wow! Very round ball. Does it slip and impale itself on a stalagmite? <laughs> 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 You know what? That is a rare occurrence. It goes to step around you, Bran, to join its mate. Um, hmm. Yeah, Bran, this is against you. Uh, I will roll a reflex saving throw. Otherwise, it spills on the guts and slams its head doing a d12 worth of damage. If you want to take damage, I will give it disadvantage on the roll, and it'll take 2d12 worth of damage. Well, I'm only at one hit point, so if I take any damage, I'm out. All right. So I cannot afford that, because I am the only one that can heal around here. (laughs) I used my my last... Yeah, you... slot, so I have no cure wounds right now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I missed you stepped out of there. I yeah, I'm the only things. one that could heal. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give it a DC 15 reflex 
not reflex, dexterity saving throw. I listen to a lot of Pathfinder. Uh, <laughs> that is a six. D12 damage. It steps over your body, Bran, and to avoid stepping on you, it slips on some guts and impales what's left of its head into a stalagmite and falls dead <clears throat> with 12 points of fucking damage. What did you do? Look, the Raven Queen has intervened. <laughs> I rolled my D100 because he just woke up. Yeah. And I was like, all right, if it's high, they're going to go after him again. If it's low, they think he's dead and gone. I rolled a nat one. <laughs> On a D100. On a D100. <clears throat> On a D100. Yep, it happens. Oh my gosh. The other one flies into a rage. Anja. Yeah, I'm right there. 22. Oh, Christ. I'm going to go down too next. Wait, and... I thought Riley had some healing. No, I used my last spell slot with the Misty Step. Shit. You take nine points of piercing damage as it bites yes! out at you. I'm still alive. I'm still up. And now the uh, secret assassin ghoul rises up from what? pretending to be dead. <clears throat> and Anja, you go ahead. You better not. Mm -hmm. I am about to look. I, I, you can tell Anja's about to fall. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to. Wait, is this the one that I had cast uh, that had um, Slayer's Prey on? This would have Slayer's Prey on. Okay, great. So I can just make two attacks. I suppose. I suppose. Watch them. All right, well, they're not bullshit. <clears throat> uh, 18. 18 will hit. And 15. Just hits. Oh, yes! 3d6 plus 8. Oh, what a crap roll, budget roll. That's 6 plus 8 is 14 points of damage. How much damage? 14. One four. 14. <clears throat> Very nice. Between both of those attacks? I rolled a 1, 2, and a 3 on the damage. Wow, okay. Plus well, 8. As long as I'm not the only one rolling low, so... All right, that brings us back to Bran. You've just watched the creature slip and kill itself uh, quite <laughs> on accident. Um, I suggest um, you try to save this beautiful creature because I've never seen anything like it, and it's such a rare... <laughs> Yeah. yeah that's First great. question is: Am I? I'm in melee combat with the other one, correct? You are on melee combat. It is not paying attention to you. And I'm looking really, 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 really bad. Really bad. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to think of how to do this. This is going to be go before you. <laughs> Um. Do that take it out. It's not likely it can't it can't massive damage me to death, so uh, I got a fighting chance. How bad does it look? How bad does it look? Um <clears throat> maybe one of its arms is a little limp. So but this thing is in almost full fury oh, after watching the other creature die. Um, I will. What's your bonus to medicine? Oh, my medicine bonus is plus six. Plus six. Go ahead and roll on the die. 19. 19? Yeah, it's still got a decent round yeah. of fight. Left I kind of figured. It. Yeah. Uh, so it's six plus four. I will go ahead and <clears throat> I will go ahead and um, stand up mm -hmm. and use a healer's kit to heal up Anja 1d6 plus 4 plus her 
maximum hit dice, which should be three. So that should be six, 1d6 plus seven. So four plus seven, so 11 hit points. I'll take it. It's better than being at one hit point. And 12 is better than one. Can't remember if I can make a bonus action attack without making an attack. I don't think I can. I don't think you can either. Yeah. We'll yeah, go on to Riley, and if you find yeah. a reading no, that good. says otherwise, okay. Go. Riley, go for it. Woo, Eldridge Blast. Boo-boo. Nat one. That misses. That misses <laughs> real good. One plus seven. Yeah. I got an eight this time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You just wing off an Eldritch Blast and you see Brand gets right in front of it and you just turn your hand up and out of the way uh, and it strikes the stealing and a stalactite uh, that's hanging above the creature as opposed to uh, it. Uh, we are I, I, over... Can it be the stalactite right above Nebby? Just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. You still, still bitter, huh? No, not quite. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> oh, Riley, uh, Anja, you rolled terribly. I forgot. Two attacks. There for is what? one Bran. There is one Anja. I rolled terribly for what? Rolled terribly for what? Oh, you rolled terribly for initiative. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you may have had a chance if it... Uh, yeah. Was after you. Does a 19 <laughs> hit you, Anja? Yeah, it hits me. Does a 10 hit you, Bran? No, it does not. I think I'm happy about this, though. Mm-hmm. I've got a little breathing room. I don't think he does. That is four points of piercing damage. All right. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not great, but I'm okay. I'm still better than I was before he healed me. Mm-hmm. Anja, <laughs> go ahead. Two attacks. I believe this is going to be two. Oh, that's going to be two hits because the lowest of the attacks was an 18. That'll hit. And the others are going to be above it, like 24. All right, here. <clears throat> damn it. Oh, God damn it. Same roll I made last time. So for it's two ones and a three. So that six plus eight is 14. Interesting. All right. Brand. 14 is the number of the night, by the um, way, folks. Mm-hmm. I dropped a die, too. Where did it go? <sighs> Do this. Yeah, I can't feasibly do this well. Um, yeah, I'll just. I was going to say, I think this could take one of you out before it goes. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of a way to fuck it up, but I don't think I can. Uh, I will. Yeah, I can't. That's all bonus. That's all actions, not bonus actions. Damn it. All right, I'm going to do something a little stupid. (laughs) I want to delay until after it goes again. I like I like stupid. I want to delay just before Anja. Just before Anja. Before yes. it goes again or before Anja goes before again? Before Anja goes because my aim is to trip it so she can get advantage on it. We will hold an action to trip the creature uh, after after I imagine Riley shoots an Eldritch Blast. Yeah, let's see. Well, I don't want it to get back up before Anja, so it has to be after it goes. That's... If it doesn't take one of us down, sure. Sure. <laughs> this is a great plan. This is the only way I could think of to potentially... It's it's also fishing for crits. Riley, yeah. go. 26 to hit. That'll hit. Yes! That'll hit. Full weld on damage. Come on. Roll a 10. Nine. Nine damage. Very good. Nine damage? Yeah. All right. With nine points of damage. (laughs) Please die. It lets out a bloodthirsty roar as it falls 
dead. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even have to do it. Nope. <laughs> and then Brent comes over and just kicks it in the knee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it falls over dead. Good job, Brent. If it, the if hero. It, <clears throat> if you I, kick I, it, if a mic kicks you an adventure in the knee, does it end its career? Yes. Unfortunately, it's not an adventurer, so it ends its life instead. The shame had no life. Works. Oh, okay. You have defeated the creatures. You <sighs> have found the missing mutineers, as well as the drunk Zeb. And you have found the lair of these creatures uh, that appear to have attacked some of the uh, island guard as well. Is this all of the remaining ship's crew, or are we missing anyone? You have first mate Aiden Pasela and Captain Kenza are the only crew of the Hazel's Folly other than yourself. They're not going anywhere. I guess uh, I have to worry about fixing the ship. You brand round. <clears throat> um, give me, if you want to know what kind of creatures they are, you can give me a yog Sathothri or something else. Your choice. Sure, why not? Searching the bodies, you find five gold, eight silver, twelve copper. Uh, I'll take a nature check if you don't have your oh, nature. Thumbery. That would probably be a good one. Seventeen. Seventeen, 17. for 17. nature. Mm -hmm. Bran, you look around and you see a pile of sweetbreads in the corner, mixed in with dirt. It's pretty clear whatever these creatures are, they were a mating pair and you stumbled across a nest. Uh, mating pair of undead creatures? Now that's They are undead, are they? They are not undead. Oh as God, they are they're also not undead. Remember they're living. Bleeding as well. Uh, you would know these creatures as ghast. Uh, oh, living oh. gas. Mm -hmm. uh, creatures that uh, primarily dwell underneath the ground. Uh, sunlight uh, will burn the flesh from their bones if they stay up too long. Would have been nice to have a divine soul sorcerer who could throw around radiant damage. Um, these things are just these uh, odd-looking satyr creatures. Uh, uh, Riley, did you want to roll a check or no? Yeah, I got a 14. You got a 14? Okay, yeah. These creatures are <clears throat> often used as mounts. You can ride them, despite the fact that they are quite small. They are strong. Um, and it looks like maybe these ghouls were taking care of these creatures. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's what you know. You go through the bodies. There's quite a few more to uh, carry up. You'll probably end up needing to take the time to bring the bodies above ground if you so too wish to. Um, and you pull up yourselves up from the privy. Uh, Lothar has extended a rope down. Uh, after having some time to think ahead, you climb up. Uh, was it more ghouls? It was gas. Well, I'm not familiar with those. Uh, just Which... another type of creature living down in the tunnels. The ghouls were keeping them as mounts or pets or something. Um, we, we found all the crew, Zeb and, and a guard. Another guard. There's a secret in this town where I think ghouls... I think the ghouls are trying to take over. And as he says that, you hear yelling from outside, and Damn bam, it. a door opens up. 
you see a finely dressed uh, looking gentleman with a high pitched uh, noise uh, who is speaking with Captain Kenza and uh, the first mate. And it sounds like they're pleading their case for the mutineers. Um, with them is a figure dressed in full plate mail cape and everything uh, uh, with a helmet underneath his shoulders. Um, a incredibly handsome and dashing individual who one of you recognize. But the moment they look at you covered in shit, blood, and the awful smell, the magistrate uh, turns his head, what the hell happened here? And we will end tonight's show on that. Who are the strange mystery figures who just came into the building? Anybody got pressed? Brian might recognize one of them. Weeks from now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh my god. Oh, there's gonna be needing. Guys, that there's is gonna be the more of a need show. of a uh, presentation than normal. <laughs> I need a bath right now. <laughs> All initiative, all all combats are now going to have to wait. Plus, I'm not doing great right now either. I'm going to kill you, Ernie. After Guys, rest, of course. This is Cred. You can follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to ask me questions about this on Discord, I might answer. I probably won't if the players can see this. If you want to buy any cool swag, we are getting the Cred merchandise worked up to put into the store it's going to look awesome, I assure you all. If you want to listen to our audio-only podcast, while that is a good idea to do if driving, I assure you, if you could see Carol's face as I describe corpses hanging up underneath Oh, ground, God, yeah. It was a well, delightful image to look at. I I'm help sure it was. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, for giving uh, wonderful dice that makes me roll well and they roll terribly. Um, they are not responsible for the nat one on the D100, and I am therefore going to throw this thing uh, uh, through the store window that I bought it in, uh, in pure outrage for killing one of my monsters too soon. Um, and finally, if your game stinks, they don't have ghoul stench yet, but I promise Oddfish Games <coughs> loves me personally so much that I'm they, sure would, they, they would absolutely love to make a ghoul stench. Uh, the only thing is you can't inhale it and you can't ask where that decaying smell comes from. Guys, uh, we appreciate you all being here tonight. Wave at the camera. Good night. Bye. Thanks for watching.